As someone who's reviewed over 200 different monitors, I would say the HP X34 that I've got behind me is among one of my favourite ultra-wide gaming monitors. In the UK it can be found for £400, and in the US it can be found for $400. And for that price you get a 1440p ultra-wide monitor that has a flat IPS panel that runs at 165Hz. It's got HDR400 support and also AMD FreeSync. That's pretty impressive for the price it's coming in at, so let's see how it actually performs throughout this review. So to kick off this review, I want to jump straight in and talk about its input lag, and here I must say I was left seriously impressed. I had it tested at 5 milliseconds, and for a monitor of its class and indeed its type, this means that it can compete with some of the very best non-ultra-wide gaming monitors, let alone those that have that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Indeed, here I could happily see myself playing high level of Counter-Strike Global Offensive or indeed jumping on a game of Valorant. Here, I don't expect most people to be buying an ultra-wide monitor and playing a hardcore competitive game, but suffice to say, you won't have any problems when it comes to input lag. But of course, that's just one side of the puzzle. What about when it comes to response time? Well, here there's a few different levels to choose from. You've got level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4. Now, level 4 does induce a lot of inverse ghosting, to the point where my eyes just couldn't get to grips with the amount of overshoot, in other words, purple trailing, that was occurring in a game such as Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which quite frankly looks like a bit of a potato. Now, if you were to go on a more graphically intense game, you'll really find this inverse ghosting will throw off your shots and take away from the overall visual experience. As such, I would highly suggest dialing it down to level 3. This gives you a sort of blend between the response time of the monitor and indeed gives you a better visual experience. Now in level 3 mode I had no problems when I was playing a hardcore competitive game such as CSGO, nor when I was playing more a casual and visually appealing game such as Destiny 2. Suffice to say, its response time is really impressive, and while it quite can't hit the one millisecond time that the manufacturer claims, because this will have to run in its highest overdrive mode, I think level 3 will suffice for a lot of people, and yet again I would happily see myself using this monitor as a daily driver if I wanted an ultra-wide gaming monitor, be it if I was playing some hardcore games or indeed more casual games. So following on from that, I should mention that the monitor has got an MPRT mode. You've got a few different levels to choose from from the OSD. The only thing to be mindful about is that it will lock the brightness at every single level and therefore doesn't allow you to customize the brightness in the slightness. And at its highest level, level 5, it is pretty dim at around 111 nits. Nevertheless, this is quite useful for those people who want to reduce motion blur. Now, one thing I should point out is that this monitor cannot run MPRT mode simultaneously with AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync. And this perfectly leads me onto these technologies. Now here I have an RTX 3080, and when connected over to DisplayPort, I was able to run the NVIDIA Pendulum demo without incurring any black screen issue or artifacts. Better still, I went on to Destiny 2 and was running NVIDIA G-Sync at 1440p ultrawide, in other words, 3440 times 1440, and was also able to run HDR. This meant that all these technologies were able to run simultaneously and I had no problems whatsoever to report on my system. So what about its HDR performance, I hear you ask? Well, here I can say that the monitor definitely does pass its standard of HDR 400, whereby I actually had it tested at 450 nits. Better still, you can have SDR or HDR at around this brightness and means that it's not capped. This means that in comparison to one of its competitors, an Acer Nitro monitor that I previously reviewed, the HP X34 is seriously impressive in this department. However, that's not to say its HDR performance is something to be shouting about. Here I found that it was a bit of a lackluster performance and the overall HDR colours just seemed a little bit off. So much so that when I was playing Destiny 2, I actually preferred running it on SDR rather than running on HDR. Quite frankly, if you do want a real HDR monitor or a superior HDR gaming experience, you should be looking for a monitor that has the HDR 600 or above standard, because here you'll get a much more lifelike image. Now, quick word for you console gamers. I had the monitor tested via my 4K Blu-ray player to see if it accepts a 4K signal input. And while it did, it only did it momentarily, whereby for 30 seconds I had a little resolution notice which told me to change the resolution or else the monitor would switch off and indeed it did exactly that. 
Suffice to say, I can't confirm it has a 4K signal input and it might differ in terms of you having a console. What I can say, however, is that if you have an Xbox via its HDMI 2.0 port, you should be able to output 1440p at 120Hz, while on PlayStation you'll be limited to Full HD at 120Hz. So its overall gaming credentials are pretty impressive, but what about when it comes to image quality? Well, this flat, ultra-wide IPS panel is also pretty impressive in this domain. I had it tested via two different calibrators, and you'll be able to see the results on your screen right now. Average LTE sat at 1.83, with a maximum of 5.74. It here it seemed to go a little bit off on the red tones, and we'll touch upon this very shortly. Gamut coverage on sRGB sat at 99.7%, and gamut volume at 113.5%. You can see here how it compares to the sRGB standard. Note this was when I was running the neutral mode on the OSD. Now as for its tested contrast ratio, I had it at 922 to 1, which is perfectly acceptable for an IPS panel. And as for the measured white point, it's a slight bit off but it's perfectly acceptable and the same goes for its gamma coverage. Now as for its brightness levels, I did allude to these before, but maximum brightness at 450 nits is seriously impressive, and so is its minimum brightness at 59 nits. The MPLT levels will be displayed on your screen as well, so you can see over here how it compares. Now indeed, the neutral preset in the OSD isn't bad, although you can customize the RGB values through the OSD, and in my case I actually reduced the red tones by a few notches. Do check it out on my OSD section in this review. What I will say is that I had it retested, and I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that the average and the maximum delta year hadn't shifted all that much and furthermore had resulted on a slightly more pleasurable experience whereby the monitor wasn't looking too red. Now moving swiftly on the overall brightness uniformity was pretty impressive. I had no issues with my tested 34 inch IPS monitor but of course I do understand this is somewhat panel lottery. As for the overall backlight bleed which is pretty much present on every single IPS monitor it is acceptable at least to my eyes. I do appreciate that some people will not want any sort of IPS bleed because they play a lot of dark games or movies and as a result you should look at a TN panel or better still if you want the superior contrast ratio look at a VA alternative instead. So moving on to the monitor's settings, it can be accessed through the Omen Gaming Hub. This is a software that HP includes and allows you to customize a few settings. Furthermore, it's quite handy if you want to customize the color of the crosshair or indeed the FPS number. But if you want more settings, you'll have to go through the hardware-based OSD. Now here, it can be accessed through a set of physical buttons that are found awkwardly around the back of the monitor. I say awkwardly because the power button doesn't actually have any differentiator between the other buttons and means that if you're frequenting the OSD, you might actually accidentally switch off the monitor. Nevertheless, through the OSD menu, you've got a plethora of different options. Now, first off, I should point out that, as I mentioned before, the adaptive sync cannot be run simultaneously with MPR, MPRT mode, so you'll have to use one or the other. Now, response time, I did allude to this before, but you'll probably want to run it on level three. As for the frame rate and the crosshair, as I mentioned before, you can access it through the software, and you've got also a multi monitor align if you need to have it for a multi-monitor setup. Now as for the color menu, I did mention this before, but in my case I actually preferred using it on the custom RGB setting with the R set at 246, G set at 254 and B set at 254 as well. Now of course this will depend on you and you can of course go for the neutral setting as I did reference before. Now as for the image, the brightness and the contrast will be purely subjective. I would suggest leaving the dynamic contrast and the black stretch off and as for the sharpness you can leave it at level 4 if you do want to sharpen up the image a little bit then you can go for level 5 but I would say just resort not to using this all that much because it can give you an artificial image as for the input it's pretty self-explanatory and as for the power you can actually disable the power LED that's found at the front of the monitor which is a nice little handy inclusion in case you're gaming at night now as for the menu it's to do with the OSD and as for the management it's again self-explanatory the information tab gives you indication of what the monitor is running and at the bottom you can also see if HDR is enabled or disabled. Now with my settings out of the way I should just re-emphasize how much I hate the placement of those OSD buttons, specifically the power one. Now if you were to own this monitor, a simple seller tape or something like that which would allow you to differentiate between the power button and the other buttons might be a handy fix. 
Elsewhere, I don't like the fact that HP have included their logo, which is in white and therefore a little bit distracting from the frontal profile. It's a very small point to pick, but I just thought to highlight it. As for the stand itself, it provides height and tilt adjustments. There's no surprise that you can't pivot it or rotate it, but of course you can replace the stand altogether via Visa compatible stand and therefore have it on a multi-monitor setup. And so this brings me on to my verdict, and quite frankly I can't think of a better ultra-wide IPS gaming monitor. Indeed, the HP X34 combines input lag, response time, refresh rate, resolution, peak brightness and also overall color accuracy in one comprehensive package. And while its HDR performance is lackluster, it certainly can be excused given the overall price point it comes in at. As a result, it actually gets my best buy award. Now, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts of the HP X34 down in the comment section below. And if you want some alternative suggestions, such as a VA panel instead, do check out the description. Now, if you've enjoyed this detailed, independent review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification. And for the legends out there that have already done that, I'm thanking you in advance. As such, I've been Tony Dubs, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye.